Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Patrick Alonde, and, and today I'll be presenting about mapping of waste piles and plastic pollution using UAV API and machine learning. So a little bit about me. Uh, I come from the Republic of Malawi. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful countries in South East Africa, as you can see on the uh, map. And uh, a few years ago, particularly in 2017, I was at the US Embassy in Malawi. And there was this guy who was talking about maps. So he talked about uh, someone by the name of Dr. John Snow. And he talked about uh, a time in the 1800s when London was affected by uh, an outbreak of polio. And his talk took my heart and said, ah, oh, this is amazing. But what really took my uh, attention was how this guy uh, used maps to solve uh, the problem of Korea. So my talk is around the same subject. So after hearing about the story of Dr. John Snow and looking back to the community that I come from, as you can see on the map, uh, you can see buildings, lots, rivers, but it's also a community that has the problems which are not there on the map. For example, if you go around the streets, you see that there are piles of waste. Actually, in the rivers, uh, you see plastics and so many other things. So, we, myself and my friends, we said, okay, can we maybe just map these uh, waste piles? So we went on the internet to look for uh, previous work that we done by other people, and we found an article that was published by uh, uh, Mr. Sean Rink, which is on uh, open data on mapping plastic pollution. And with that, we were fascinated. We said, let's do this in this community. And we mobilized a few friends going around, uh, collecting coordinates for locations where waste is being disposed. And with that, we were able to generate a map mm -hmm. of our community with waste piles, as you can see there. So now, as I said previously, every problem can be mapped. So the problem of waste, we were able to map it. But then, at that time, people said, maps are not the real solution that we want. Maps are just a means to the end. It's not the end. So they said, let's do a cleanup campaign. So we mobilized resources, volunteers, and we did a cleanup exercise in the community. So we were excited. At that time, there was a movement called a hashtag trash challenge. So we cleaned one of the places, and we sent it on social media. People were, oh, this is nice. But after a few days, people continued disposing waste at the same location. We were disappointed. Our hearts were broken. And in 2020, the president of the Republic of Malawi, Dr. Lazarus Jaguya, announced that uh, every second Friday in Malawi, there will be waste cleanup campaigns. So, looking at my experience doing cleanup campaigns, I was like, okay, let me write in the national newspaper. So, I sent an article to the newspapers in Malawi. The article that you can see on the screen saying that cleanups is just a scratch on the surface. So, this is one of the activities that my friends mobilized uh, other volunteers to support the national uh, cleanup campaign, even though I published the paper. So, what we observed was that the problem that we were trying to uh, solve. It's not just a local problem for my community. This is a global problem. In fact, uh, particularly for plastics, their leakage into the environment is actually linked to the existence of systems for management of waste. And the various international guidelines, for example, the United Nations Environmental Program, mm -hmm. they have published pub guidelines that emphasize on the need for monitoring uh, waste and plastics in the environment. Because they say, if you can't measure it, you cannot know that you make a difference. And uh, 
Looking at the way we did our exercise of collecting coordinates of locations where waste barrels are in our community, the process that we did was labor intensive and also difficult to upscale because we only collected coordinates in locations that were accessible to us. As you saw previously, most of the waste is actually in the river. So walking in the river to collect the coordinates, that's something that we did not do. So like for example here, the whole river is full of waste. So we realized that drone technology is a promising technology. And if we bring in drone technology, this can actually strengthen the efforts of uh, monitoring the impacts of the policies and strategies that we put in place, particularly to combat the problem of waste management. So this was our key question. How best can we integrate uh, the UAV technology, machine learning, particularly for locating these uh, uh, waste piles in the community? So we had to, uh, because they say the only way you can see better is by standing on the shoulders of giants. So we had to look at what others have done, and we found that there were some papers published in peer reviewed journals, particularly in uh, Portugal and other countries. So we uh, developed our methods based on what others have done. So we started with like uh, a small experiment. We had some uh, plastics on the ground, and we were flying a drone at different heights. So, for example, you can see like at the top there, we flew our drone at 50 feet. You, like we will see our plastic, but when we increase the height, the plastic was not even visible. And uh, we saw that because flying a drone in a, uh, a location where there are buildings, it is difficult to fly it very low because. We were only able to observe that there are plastics when you fly it lower. So it was a big challenge for us. So we uh, collected some drone imagery uh, in Dilan, the neighborhood in Malawi, as you can see there. And uh, clearly, when you just zoom into the image, waste piles are actually visible, as you can see there in the middle of the picture. So the question is should we do this manually or should we? Uh, automate the process. So we uh, employed a, an object-based image classification approach. So we have to group pixels which are similar together into segments as you can see there. And uh, we had to create some training samples that can be used as examples to build our machine learning model. So we are, uh, because based on the literature that people have done, uh, one of the approaches, machine learning algorithm that was very successful was the use of land forest. So we had to create like a five-fold uh, cross-validation, which was repeated five times, and we developed our model, which was uh, which performed far much more better. As you can see there, from the data which we had, we had to reserve some twenty percent for testing, and out of like the twenty uh, points that we had for waste piles, mm -hmm. it was able to like identify 19 waste piles and it only missed one. Of course, there are also some uh, confusion where like things which are not waste piles were classified as waste piles. And the, in terms of, of the accuracy, those are the numbers. The performance is just very good. So this is the output. So you can see uh, the same community, you have like uh, in lead, the waste piles that are there in the river. So, we also extended to see, like, since like the map that I showed you previously, one cannot see plastics because people are much more interested in mapping plastic pollution. So, we tried to experiment to see, like, if we map plastics because it was difficult for us to fly very low given the obstacles. So, we said, okay, let's just map some plastics across the ground and see if we can be able to. Uh, correctly identify them using machine learning. And yes, indeed, we were able to detect some of these plastics, as you can see in lead. And the, this is the performance. It is also good, but not good as the previous one. So, what's the take home message? 
the use of drone technology for monitoring the environment is very promising. It creates unique opportunities for environmental management. Particularly given that we can be able to monitor the interventions that we put in place to see if they are really achieving the results that we want. So for us, our next step is to move beyond working with our computers and maps, but rather to also integrate this information in existing urban environmental management programs. So we are considering of engaging stakeholders, policy makers, local communities. And the, beyond that, uh, we also have a belief that uh, as an individual you can go first, but as a group you can go far. So we want to make uh, such data to be open so that we should be able to uh, get solutions from uh, different places. They say that uh, great ideas, they come from unexpected sources. So we want to make this thing to be much more open as much as possible. And the last point is, the process of developing training data was labor intensive. It took a lot of time for us to develop this data. So we're exploring alternatives, for example, uh, crowdsourcing, for example, the way OpenSeed map operate, a lot of people come together and they create a lot of data within a short period of time. So that's one of the things that we want to uh, integrate look into the future. Yeah, so these are the people who have been helping me along the way. Thank you very much.